How many copies of the small square and the median square can you add and subtract to obtain the area that's equal to the area of the large square? Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here I have a question for you guys. Suppose after you finish watching my Extreme Algebra video, and you decide to do an Extreme Algebra question on your own as well, and you are going to work out A plus B plus C, and you are going to multiply this out seven times. So take this to a seventh power. You don't have to tell me the whole answer. Please just tell me what's the coefficient of this term a to a third power, b to a second power, c to a second power. And as always, please pause the video and try this first. All right. So hopefully you guys have a chance to try it, but I don't have the answer for you guys yet because I haven't worked this out yet, right? So anyway, I'm going to demonstrate this way to approach this. And after this, you guys can generalize this to what we call the trinomial theorem or the trinomial expansion theorem. And you can also extend it to multinomial expansion theorem, all that stuff. So that's kind of cool. And another question for you guys is that, okay, yes, you can expand this <laughs> seven times, yeah? Perhaps if you do that, let me know in a comment down below, how many terms do we have for this right here, right? How many terms do we have in this expansion, right? I don't know how many terms you guys have to tell me, Okay, so maybe you can just think about this, like where well, you guys are watching the video. So maybe your left brain is like thinking about this question and your right brain is thinking about how many terms this has and all that. And in the end, of course, I'll show you guys that as well. And here's the deal though. I don't know how many terms I have yet, but I will tell you each term, they all have degree seven. For example, this right here, the degree right here is three plus two plus two, which is seven, okay? All the degrees for the terms, they will all be seven. So keep that in mind. This is always true, just like the binomial situation as well. By the way, let's figure this out. So let's take a look of a to a third power, b to a second power, c to the second power. And of course, we can write this out. We know a to a third power is the same as saying a times a times a, and b to a second power is, of course, b times b, and c squared is just c times c. So this is good, but this is not the only way. Because, of course, this right here, I can also write it as a times b times b, and then times a times c times c, and then times a. This will still produce a to the third power, b to the second power, c to the second power, huh? And I can do another one for you guys. I can also do that, say, c times b times b, and then another c, and then a, a, a. That will also produce that for us. So you just have to kind of think about how many times can we do this? In another word, how many ways can we arrange three A's, two B's, and two C's? So this is, again, a combinatorial argument for this. Very, very cool. Well, let's see. Again, we will have to have seven things. So this is how I usually like to expand this. So I will just draw seven of these little things. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one more seven right here. Cool. You can look at this two ways. The first one is just like what I did in the previous video on um, the selection, right? Like seven choose whatever, seven choose whatever. Let's do that. For, let me do that for you guys first. Among the seven spots, what you are going to do is you are going to choose three of them to be the ace. So let's take this right here, for example. We can do this right here, this right here, and this right here for the ace. This is definitely possible. Well, in this case, how many ways can we do so? Well, first of all, there were seven spots. I will have to choose three of them to be the A's, and that's just them choose three. We're done. Next, we will have to think about how many ways can we choose two spots for the B's, yeah? And if I'm following that, I will put this down in blue. We are choosing this and that for the B's. Well, that was because four choose two, right? We have four spots left, and we have to choose two of them to be the spots for the Bs. And lastly, technically, you will have to put down to choose two. You have two right here. You just have to choose the rest. This will be the spots for the Cs. And that's pretty much it. So two choose two, like that. Well, you can work this out. This is, of course, I will just write this down as the following. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. No, 7 times 6 times 5 
because you just have to have three numbers, right? And then divide it by three factorial, three, two, one, like this. And for four choose two, all we have to do is four times three divided by two times one. And then for this, technically it's just two times one over two times one, like that. This is very, very good. But check this out. On the top, you happen to get 7 factorial. On the bottom, you happen to get 3 factorial. And this right here, we have 2 factorial. And this right here, we have another 2 factorial. Of course, the bottom here, these numbers, they are all multiplying together. So, this right here is really cool. The truth is, Instead of looking at this as like how many ways you can choose forever, you could have done it as this way. You pretty much have a word where you can just say, think about, you have seven letters, but three of them are being repeated, and then these two are being repeated, and these two are being repeated. In how many ways can you arrange these letters? Three A's, two B's, and two C's. That's precisely seven factorial because you have a total of seven things. So you have to do 7 factorial, but you will have to divide it by 3 factorial because this A, this A, and that A, they are all the same. So if you, choose, if you switch the A from here to here, from here to here, they are still the same. So you have to divide that out. Likewise, the two Bs are the same, you have to divide it out. The two Cs are the same, so you have to divide that out. So you do have two ways to look at this question. But the deal is that this is the answer for how you are going to get a coefficient for this. And perhaps I should really work this out for you guys, huh? So let's see, if you cancel things out, of course, this and that will be gone, and one doesn't really matter, and this and that will be gone, and this and that, this will be a two, so this times that is six, times five is 30, times that is 210. So this right here will be the answer, but it's not the answer that's interesting, it's how you think about the question. Better yet, we can also generalize this right here. So we can talk about the trinomial theorem, right? So, real cool. And uh, let me just write this down right here for you guys. This is the trinomial theorem, THM, right? For theorem. Here's the deal. Let me just write this down right here. A plus B plus C raised to the nth power, right? And I'll just keep it like this. First of all, as I told you guys earlier, you will have a lot of terms. I don't know how many you guys, maybe you guys are commenting also, I don't know yet. But we are going to add all the terms together. We cannot combine them, but we have to add them up. So we have to use a summation again. And here's the deal. Of course, everybody will have the form a to some power, b some, to some power, and c to some power. This right here, as I told you guys earlier, no matter what term you have, but the degree of the term, they have to be 7. So you have 3 plus 2 plus 2, that will give you 7. Or you can also have 6 plus 1 plus 0, that will also give you 7. So what you have to pay attention to is this. Let's put down i, j, and k. Don't get too excited, this is not a complex number, this is just an innocent index. Okay, just i. Right? So let's put down i, j, k. And what we'll do is, we we'll have to make sure i plus j plus k has to be equal to n. So this is how you can make sure what kind of term that you have. And you have to run through all this kind of possibility. And here is the deal. We still have to have the coefficient, and this is where it comes in. If you want a coefficient of a to a third power, b to a third, second power, c to the second power, you do this. You are going to put this down as n and depends on how you want to say it. You just say n, and then you just write down i, j, k, right? i, comma, j, comma, k. But the condition is that i, j, k, they have to be added to n. So this right here is the idea. So what exactly is this? This is the trinomial coefficient. So the way to work that out is when you have n, choose i, j, k, I guess this is how you say it. <laughs> Well, remember, last time, when I put down n choose k, the formula was just n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial, right? But 
if you have the following. If you know what and what add up to n, suppose you have n and let's say j and k. I'm not kidding, okay, but j and k. If you know j plus k is equal to n, then in that case, you can write this down as n factorial divided by j factorial k factorial. You could have done it like this in the binomial theorem situation, right? But this is the usual way that people do it. However, once you have three, three index right here, you cannot really talk about the subtraction that easily. So the better way is just look at it like this. And this right here, what you do is you do n factorial divided by i factorial. Again, don't get too excited. This is not the imaginary factorial, okay? i factorial, and you multiply by j factorial, and you have to multiply by the k factorial. And the truth is, we did that right here. We divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial, and also 2 factorial, like this. So this is how you work it out. Therefore, I, my, I, I could have written this as 7 choose two, 3, 2, 2, like this. 7 choose 3, 2, 2, like this. I don't know how you will say it, but you know, 7 and then 3, 2, 2, like that. And remember, in the previous video that I showed you guys the binomial coefficients, I showed you guys the Pascal's triangle. In fact, if you use this right here, you can do a bi you can do a Pascal's pyramid. It's a 3D version. You have three terms inside. You have the 3D version of the bin of the trinomial of, of the um, Pascal's pyramid. Right? That's, that's the 3D version of the Pascal's triangle. So you get the Pascal's pyramid. Very very cool. All right, so this right here, is, this is it, right? So that's it. And now, of course, I will have to answer that question for you guys. So this is the bonus. Of course, I'll do it in purple for you guys, just to make this a little bit stand out, right? All right, right here, this is the key. Because remember, you see, you have to have i plus j plus k equals n. And i, j, k, right here, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it could have been like 6, 1, and 0. So I should also write down this right here for you guys. I want i, j, k to be non-negative whole numbers that add up to n. All right, so how many terms do we have right here? Here is the solution. We have to think of this with the combinatorial idea again. It's all about this right here. So I need the number, okay, the number of non-negative, non-negative integer solution, or positive or whole number solution, integer solutions, i, j, k, i, j, k, and the water matters, right? The water matters. So that i plus j plus k equals 7, because we have the power right here being 7. And this is how we will do it, right? This is kind of cool. You don't want to think about three numbers, they add up to seven, right? So this is how you do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the seven right here. And you are going to give me two more because you have two plus signs. So I will put on two more here and here. And now here's the deal. You have a total of nine things to consider. You are going to choose two of them to be the plus signs. So the answer is actually just nine choose two. <laughs> for example, if you put the plus signs right here and here, for example, right? right here and right here, what you're saying is i is two because of two of this. There's no j, so j is zero because there's no spot in between of these two uh, circles. It, you, again, you put on plus and plus. And then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So k is equal to 5, like that. Another example, maybe if you put the plus sign here and then the plus sign here, then in that case, i is still 2, 1, 2, and j will be 1, 2, 3, and then k will be 1, 2. And again, the order matters, okay? We are just looking for all the possibilities. So 2, 3, 2, it's very different than 3, 2, 2, right? In terms of how many terms that you have. Because just like how you uh, talk about algebraic terms, like combined terms. 
a to the second power, b to the third power, c to the second power is very different than that, right? So that's the idea. So 9 choose 2. That's very cool, huh? And of course, that's just working out. This is 9 times 8, just two of this, divided by 2 times 1. And of course, work this out. This is just going to be 1. This is going to be 4. So altogether, you have 36 terms. Yes! Oh my gosh, so much fun to talk about discrete mathematics. Okay, so if you like the question that we just did, then you also like Brilliant Network. First of all, I want to thank Brilliant Network for sponsoring this video. Brilliant Network is a math and science website that they focus on problem solving because they believe the best way to learn is by practice. And as you can see, they have so many different types of questions for their daily challenges for you guys to choose from. And I would like to show you guys this one for today. First of all, this picture here is so famous. And based on this picture here, can we solve for x? And today's question is actually right here. Take a look of this picture. How many copies of the small square and the median square can you add and subtract to obtain the area that's equal to the area of the large square? So as you guys can see, and the fee right here is the golden ratio. Huh, very interesting. So if you have like 10 minutes during your break, be sure you guys just take this out and so look over the questions so that we can keep learning each every day and if you guys are interested you guys can use the link brilliant.org slash black pen because this way you guys can get a 20% off discount for the annual premium subscription which will get you the access to all of these courses right here thank you guys so much for watching the video and thank you guys for checking out brilliant.org so anyway hopefully you guys all like this video and uh, maybe we'll do more about this and uh, maybe like math competition questions. So if you guys like this video, please give me a like and also make sure to subscribe. And if you would like, I would really appreciate if you guys can share my videos with your classmates, your teachers, your students. Thank you guys so much. You guys are so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.